going? How are you? How you doing today? All right. Oh yeah. How you doing, my man? A lot of people out today. A lot of people out. Uh, just want to mingle through the crowd a little bit. See what's going on. I've been just busy, it's been a busy week for me anyway. But I'm trying to make all my points. How you doing today? Good morning. See a couple of my YouTubers out here. Uh, I might watch their stream as well. triceps in the house um, I believe I seen Alan over there and yeah, see what else we got a lot of people coming in hey good morning how you doing all right just about to get started this is supposed to be a pretty big one so gonna mingle around up here see what I see a lot of friendly faces some people I recognize, some people I don't recognize. How you doing? for this one so if I run out of uh, space forgive me I got too much videos on it as it is all right a lot of reporters out here no shortage of uh, News reporters, cameramen. How you doing today? <laughs> Not sure there's the police officers on the roofs the tops up there. If you guys can see them, they're on the roofs, they're on the sides, they're on uh, the front and the rears, and. Also got cameras on us, just so you know. See my man over here. A lot of news media out here. What's going on, my man? How you doing? How you doing? All right. Not too bad. Good to see you. I've been checking out so many videos out there. I, I, I don't get a chance to watch as much as I should, but I've been watching them. Yeah. I, I, I pay more attention to it later on when I get more time. How you doing, my man? All right, all right. A lot of people out here today. I'm 
Shimmy in the house. Oh, yeah. Shimmy, Shimmy, that's right there, Shimmy. Where? Ernest, with the red backpack on. And yeah, he's supposed to be. He's one of the organizers. I see a lot of friendly faces out here. Some of them I know, some of them I don't know, but I see him. Get triceps over hello, there. Hello, hello, hello. Can you all hear me? Yeah. I can't really tell. Can you all hear me? Yeah. All right, first, I want to thank you for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here. Um, before we start anything, we need to take a moment of silence, obviously, for Dante Wright. <laughs> okay, thank you. Also, um, I need to just put in perspective that there are Dante Wrights and there are George Floyds and there are Breonna Taylors right here in Boston and in Massachusetts. So additionally, we're gonna take a moment of silence for Moses Harris, who was buried today. Uh, additionally, we're gonna take a moment of silence for Burrell Ramsey White who was shot in 2012. Additionally, we're gonna take a moment of silence for Terrence Coleman, who was shot in 2016. Now, honestly, I need you to raise your hand if you've ever heard of Burrell Ramsey White. Honestly, and there's no shame. Terrence Coleman. Moses Harris. Dante Wright. George Floyd. Sandra Bland. There's no shame here, but we got to do better. We have to do better, including myself. So today, when you go home, I need you to Google Moses Harris, Burrell Ramsey White, and Terrence Coleman. And, and pardon me if there are any names that I forgot, because I got a lot going through my head. If there's any other names you want to shout out, we can take an additional moment to silence for them also. Oh, yes. Adam Toledo. Feel free to just throw them out. If anybody, if anybody needed to know why we're here, that's why. I don't have a, I don't have a fancy speech. My name is Shimmy. I'm part of the Freedom Fighters Coalition. This is the March for Justice for Dante Wright. Make some noise for being here. Oh. All right, so we're gonna get started. Um, I'm gonna bring up the mom of Burrell Ramsey White. It's Miss Carly Sheffield. Make some noise for Carly Sheffield, y'all. Oh. Thank you. Um, you know, thank you for allowing me to go first. It is very hard to get up every day 
even after eight years of dealing with this, because I still have yet to receive any justice. Um, I know I always come to these rallies, I say my piece and then I split. It's like um, I have a paralyzed adult son at home and no one to help me care for him. So this is why I come, say what I have to say and I go. But what I have to say is very important because we keep having these gatherings and we are so sick and tired of hearing my prayers are with the families. That does not bring our child back. What we need is accountability from the police department, from our Congress, from our senators, from City Hall. You all are peace officers. You are supposed to make our streets safer and you are contributing to the problem. My son was shot. My son, Burrell Anthony Ramsey White, was shot and killed 10 days after he turned 26 in what was a routine traffic stop on uh, Columbus Ave, Tremont Street. Columbus Ave. I lived in Tent City for 10 years. According to the four-line police report, it says someone called the police department because someone was looking in cars and they had a routine traffic stop. My son was pulled over. They asked my son for his license. My son asked why he was being pulled over. The officer didn't tell him. They went back and forth for a few minutes. Why are you pulling me over? License and registration. My son was driving someone else's car. He then gave the officer, he put the window down about this much, gave the officer his license. There was two officers, a black officer on this side of the car, a white officer on this side of the car. Mind you, when they pulled up, they had a warrant in their hand. I didn't know this until we got into court, that they had a warrant in their hand for the owner of the car that my son was driving. When my son gave them the license, they couldn't be bothered to compare the warrant to the license. The white officer then reached inside the car with the window that cracked and tried to grab my son. So my son took off. He started the car, drove into Tent City where he knew people knew him. He jumped out the car, left it running, and continued to run. These officers um, gave chase. One went to the car, another one continued to chase my son, calling him, motherfuckers, I'm going to kill you. Don't let me catch you because now their adrenaline's pumping. They are pissed off that they got to run and chase after somebody. So this heightens uh, this officer, and, and I can't say what's in his mind, but after going to court and hearing his story change over and over again, he's just as bad as the people he's putting behind bars. So he chases my son, and my son runs into, tries to run into this teen center that we had created in Tent City, but the door was locked. So my son turns around and puts his hands up, and the, fire, the officer shoots and kills him. The officer changes his story four times. After my son drops, um, everybody comes out. There's a little girl who knew my son by his voice. She could hear the tussling and called her mother. Her mother comes outside and my son is laying on the ground dead. There was an 86 year old woman who watched all this transpire. There was a videotape that um, caught all this but Commissioner Gross, and this hasn't been said but I, I am so sick and tired of not getting justice so I'm starting to name names. I can't say the officer's name because they will sue me. They will sue me, isn't that ironic? But I'm gonna let you know that um, Commissioner Evans, uh, not Commissioner Evans, Commissioner Davis was the commissioner at the time. And he went into Tent City and took the videotape that captured all this. He left because his son was also being arrested for um, breaking and entering in the daytime with a dangerous weapon. So he took this tape, Rachel Rawlings, this is my evidence that I'm sharing with you because you called me, you sent me a letter saying that you would meet me with me in December. We're here in April. I responded, I called, and still no meeting. So now I'm going to do it publicly. Mm. Commissioner Gross took the tape. Went and slid his son into a drug program and slid we slid my son into a grave. That is not fair. I will not shut up. I do work for the courts, and I feel like justice is not blind. It's the people controlling the justice, the laws. It's the ones who sit behind the laws, that hide behind the laws, that hide behind their supervisors. That's what needs to change. Stop hiring people straight out of high school. Educate them, train them, give them something to 
aspire for. If you want to be a police officer, the whole thing is to public safety. You can't pick and choose who wins and who loses. You can't pick and choose what city, what country, what town that you want to uplift and respond to in a nice manner and the other one in a derogatory, negative, lambasted way. We are so tired of y'all painting us as these bad criminals when white folks do the same crime. Stop the bullshit. I'm tired. I got four grandsons, and I have to raise them in this. So let's, not only with the police, in our own community. Enough is enough. Stop killing each other. We have to work together. The United States is supposed to be, supposed to be, the best country in the world. It does not discriminate. It doesn't demonstrate that. Every day, another mother is going through what I went through eight years ago. It's enough. And if Congress doesn't want to help, use your voice. Get them out. We can run. We can run. It doesn't require much. It requires determination, positivity, attitude, and wanting a better change. I can go on and on, but as I said, I have to get to my son, so I'm going to leave you all with this poem. First of all, court needs to change, too. For the mothers like myself who keep losing their kids to police officers and to the kids on the street, justice is not being served, and that needs to change. Supervisors need to be dealt with. You can't keep slapping these same officers on the street and talk about see something, say something when we watch your officers see something and not say something. And George Floyd is not here because of that. Don't ask us to follow laws that you're not following. All right. The laws weren't put on this planet, on this earth, just for citizens. Just because you put on a blue uniform, you still have to not only abide by the laws of the world, but you have your own police department laws that you clearly aren't following. Get it together or get out the way so someone else can do your job better. My son was killed 10 days after he turned 26. It took me three months to lift my head up off the pillow. And that after that three months, I, w I had so much anger in me. I went to every program that they had, so I would not be portrayed as an angry black woman. And standing in front of you as a black woman who's angry. I wrote a poem, and I entitled it, Hey Officer. So this goes out to all the officers, all your supervisors listen and change. And it goes, hey officer, can I take this out of here? I miss my son. I miss my child. You took him from me and hid all the while. I miss my son's face. My heart's in a broken place. You took my son without my permission. Now I'm crying, praying, and wishing that justice be served because if nothing else is what I deserve. You pretend to protect and serve. You got a nerve. You carry a badge and gun. Expect a brother not to run. You wear a uniform, pretending to be a cop. When he asks you not to, you raise your gun and shot. Now I'm left here to, now I'm left here, now I'm left here to wrap this around my head. The Boston police just shot my son dead. No words of comfort, you said nothing nice. I hope to hell this haunts you for life. A mystery shooter, I know it's weird. He shot my son and disappeared. It wasn't a child from off the street. It was Boston police that walked the beat. Oh yeah, you said he opened fire. But we all know that's cold, you liar. That's what your super told you to say. It makes it easier to clear you that way. Our children are dropping time after time. But to be shot by police, now that's a crime. Then to say his death wasn't violent, it was to me because my life was silent. As my story comes to an end, how do I tell my grandchildren police are your friend? You read what you sow, and just so you know, as Burrell's mother, I will never let this go. Thank you. Be the change you see. Make some noise for Carla Sheffield, y'all. Say his name, Burrell Ramsey White. Say his name. Say his name. Say his name.
right, we're gonna keep it going. Next, we're gonna bring out my brother Nino from the, from the party of socialism and liberation. Make some noise, y'all. Yeah. Word, peace. My name is Nino, and I'm so happy to be here with y'all. Thank you, Carla, for sharing that poem with us. Every time I hear that poem, I get inspired to fight, right? Because we are here not just to mourn, but we are ready to fight, right? Are you ready to fight? Yeah! Are you ready to fight? Yeah! So I want to start with a poem by Claude McKay, uh, and just really big up all of the victims here in Boston that we don't hear about. Right? We have Terrence Coleman, a 30-year-old black man who was shot in the South End in front of his own mother. And Police Commissioner William Evans at the time said that his mother, Hope Coleman, lied even though they killed him right in front of her. Right? Usama Rahim, a black Muslim man who was killed in, uh, uh, killed in a CVS right, in Boston. And the whole story that the media told us was, well, he's a terrorist, right? And who's telling us this? The people who took his life. Usama can't speak for himself. You killed him on his way to work in cold blood. So as we see these these tragic incidences all over the all over the country, we have to remember that the resistance has to start at home, right? We, in, in order to build solidarity, we have to lift up these names and lift up these struggles. So Claude McKay, if you know this poem, If We Must Die, uh, can snap along. If we must die, let it not be like hogs. Hunted and penned in an glorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock of our cursed lot. If we must die, oh let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us through the dead. O oh, kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and their thousand blows deal one death blow. What though before us lies open graves? Like men will face the murderous cowardly pack. Cowards press the wall dying, but fighting back if we must die. Black people in this country were not brought here to be, to be citizens. We were brought here to labor and build up the wealth of this country. So we cannot connect, we cannot disconnect the birth of this country from the murderous violence that happens every single day. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and in Brooklyn, New York, we used to do cop watch. We used to train people to watch the police, right, with the Malcolm X Grassroots Project. And we carried out a study, and it found that every 28 hours, the police are killing someone. So what Carla said is quite literal. Every single day, our people are dying at the hands of the people who are supposed to protect us, right? So we're here recognizing that what happened to Dante Wright, what happened to Adam Toledo, is not disconnected from the 400 plus year undeclared war that has been going on against black people. In the PSL we have a slogan that goes, Stop the war on black America. Can y'all say, Stop the war on black America? Stop the war on black America! Stop the war on black America! Stop the war on black America! Right, because this is an undeclared war. The police know it, they have tanks military-grade weaponry, bazookas, snipers, right? You would think that they're going up against another army, right? They see us as enemy combatants, as colonized subjects, not citizens. So at this point, we have to get it past that we're not going to reform this system. We're not going to pass a new law that's going to stop any bullets in my back, right? And as an educator, I teach, I teach first grade, right? Seeing the death, shout out to the first grade teachers. Shout out to the Boston Teachers Union, right? Within our union, we passed a resolution that called for the removal of police from schools because we know that the cops, when they're in schools, all they do is profile black students, black and brown students, right? All they do is abuse us. We know that the, Boston, the former Boston uh, Police Union, union president, was a serial child molester and rapist, right? We have to fight for justice here as well. It's beyond, it's beyond any bill, it's beyond any law, right? Like we say, we know what we saw, change the system, change the law. We need a new system because a system that was built upon our backs is not gonna liberate us. We cannot trust the capitalist system. <laughs> We 
you cannot trust the capitalist system to put the capitalist system on trial, right? No matter, no matter what they say about Derek Chauvin and him being some type of lone wolf trying to uh, disassociate him from the good and friendly Minnesotan police, right? The good and friendly Minnesotan police that just killed Dante Wright, right? The same police union, Kim Potter, who not only killed Dante Wright, but covered up the murder of an autistic man in 2019, right? As the union president, she showed up on the scene of the crime, told her two police officers to get into two different vehicles, turn your body camera off, and go two opposite directions, right? So we know that that shows America is not America. There's not one America for all of us. There's America for the rich and powerful and for the police. And then there's the America for the black, the Puerto Rican, the Mexican American, the working class, the poor and colonized people, the oppressed people, right? So we're not fighting for justice within their system. We're fighting for justice, which means a new system, right? So as a teacher, as a unionist, as an organizer, as a black person, we know that a system that was built upon our backs cannot liberate us. And we have to continue to spread that message, continue to spread that consciousness. Because so long as we think that Kamala Harris is the pinnacle of African, Asian, or black and Asian solidarity, or no matter how many black faces they put on a white supremacist institution, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, because as long as they have power, right? That's, that's, the ultimate, that's the ultimate equalizer. We don't need representation within their courts, within their systems. We need the power to try them, the power to put not just Derek Chauvin on trial, but to put the whole system on trial. So, I want to end with this. Right, in the PSL, some of our comrades have been attacked. In Denver, where Elijah McClain was murdered, our comrades were organizing the families and community on the front lines night in and night out, right, demanding justice for, for Elijah McClain. And what happened to what happened to my comrades? They got arrested claiming that they kidnapped the police. Right? They had a protest outside the police department, and the police said, Oh my god, we're so afraid for our lives, right? With all our tanks and bazookas. So they took our comrades to court and charged them with nearly 60 years. Right, of crimes, so-called crimes, right? The killers of Elijah McClain are walking free, but the people who are protesting, asking for justice, are facing some 60 years in prison, right? So we cannot reform that. We can only defeat that, right? We can't, we can't mosey on our way into uh, 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 some type of new racial democracy. We have to build a new, a new democracy that's based upon the people who have been oppressed, the families like Carla Sheffield, like Terrence Coleman, and all of us here. And what that means is that we need all power to the people. So, as I close, I need y'all to say with me, all power to the people. Until we get equal. We need all power to the people. Say his name, Terrence Coleman. Say his name. 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 Terrence Coleman. Peace. All power to you. Thank y'all for coming out here. Thanks for having us, Nina. And the entire PSL, everybody from PSL, raise your hand. Make some noise for them, y'all. Not loud enough. Make some more noise, y'all. Do you have any high school students present? If you're a high school student, raise your hand. Make some noise for the high school students, y'all. We got any co we got any college students? College students. Make some noise for the college students, y'all. Up next, we're gonna bring a speaker from a student-led organization over at Northeastern. Shout out to Northeastern. I'm gonna bring up Yolanda from the IBSA. Make some noise. Not loud enough, make some noise. A little bit louder, make some noise! Hi y'all, I'm Ilana, and I'm from the YDSA at Northeastern University. Hi! Um, I'm a freshman at Northeastern, I only just turned 19 last month. Even so, um, as this country has not shied away from showing us there's no age requirement to having experience with racism, 
I remember sitting on the corner of my bed at 12 years old grieving the death of a boy I've never even met. Reading headlines about Tamir Rice, who was killed by the police at 12 years old, was paralyzing. I sat there shaking and crying in my mother's arms, begging her to tell me why they keep killing us. Tamir Rice was my age when cops murdered him. Dante was a year older than me now when cops murdered him. Andre was just 13 when cops murdered him. As a movement, we've moved past sending just thoughts and prayers. I feel like we've moved past simply making the radical declaration that Black Lives Matter online. Although, let there be no question about it, Black Lives do matter. They have always mattered and they will continue to matter for as long as we can imagine. And as a black woman, I know that my life matters. I know the lives of my black friends and family members matter. I know the lives of my black siblings who might not be related to me by blood, but share a lived experience in a system that just loves to show how much it hates black people. I know that their lives matter. I know we know that Dante Wright's life mattered. I know that we know Andre Toledo's life mattered. I know we know Breonna Taylor's life mattered. I know we know Ahmaud Arbery's life mattered. I know we know the lives of George Floyd and the countless others that keep getting added to the seemingly never-ending list of names that keep getting killed by the police. I know that their lives mattered. And I know that, you know how I know that we know that their lives mattered? Because we're still out here. And we're gonna keep showing out until we say it's over. Not when the cops say it's over. Not when the One killer more. cops say it's over. One more. Say so. <laughs> we are. Thank you. You can do it. <laughs> Not when the killer cops say it's over, but when we're finally at a point where our community members aren't being murdered at the hands of those who are supposed to protect and serve us. <laughs> As a movement, we need to start acknowledging the injustices that are ingrained in our country's very framework. We need to start shifting our momentum from asking for small concessions, from calling for reform and begging them to, to kill less black people. They shouldn't be killing any black people. As a movement, it's time for us to organize in favor of moving towards the ultimate goal of abolition. organize in favor of moving towards abolition because too often the ideal is we talk about police reform as if that's the ideal. As if our current idea of policing is something that can be tweaked or updated to work in our favor. As if a system that's existed for 400 plus years, a well-oiled machine that was designated to, for the purposes of catching enslaved black people can ever be set on a track where we won't have to collectively mourn the loss of yet another person murdered by the police. In those 400 plus years, we've seen a few bugs in the machine software. In 1865, we ended one version of slavery with the 13th Amendment, but they included a clause that legalized its perpetuation in our prison system. Come on, come and so the